simplicity of orthodoxy. Have you ever wondered why people place so much emphasis on orthodoxy? We want to get it right, don't we? I get that. But I find it interesting that Jesus made no attempt to catalog or even organize his work into a single document. If a detailed, specific list of beliefs were that important, you'd think it would interest him. Hmm. Jesus was interesting. He had followers, but he didn't have a scribe. He told stories that confused people as much as informed them. Most of the Gospels were written 30 to 50 years after his life, and even John's version does very little to create any single organizing body of work. In fact, I would offer that his Gospel steers away from systematizing the work of Jesus. Can you say religion? Jesus essentially did the opposite of the religious world he lived in. Instead of breaking everything down into complex specifics of what to do here and what to do there, he simplified everything. He took an entire way of living and narrowed it down. And much of this, I believe, was to provide the simplicity of orthodoxy. And what was Jesus' version of orthodoxy? It all came down to two. Love your God and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. Jesus seemed to be much more interested in the fruit of our belief as opposed to what we said we believed. True orthodoxy wasn't just found in what we thought to be true. It was found in the evidence of our lives. Jesus understood that what we said meant very little if our life revealed something completely different. Don't they call that a hypocrite? Jesus is making a provocative statement with these two commands. Everything hinged on love. Love became the defining standard that revealed our belief. If we didn't love our neighbor, we were kidding ourselves. We had lost what it meant to be orthodox as human beings. And it was so important that Jesus made loving the poor the central defining qualification for judgment in the afterlife. Think about that. What if Jesus understood that we needed a way of knowing whether or not we were kidding ourselves? We needed simple. I need simple. Let's face it, we like complex because it inflates our ego. And the more complex we can make it, the more people will need our opinion on the matter. We write books that reveal our interpretation and then create conferences to discuss it. We appoint really smart people to the task of defining what's biblical and what is truth. Is that biblical? We build schools that express and support our opinion. We create denominations that let people know what church follows what version. And we find followers that buy into our way of thinking, hook, line, and sinker. And as long as we said we believed, we were good. Are you good? What I find interesting is that the followers of Jesus did very little to define orthodoxy in a complex way. Yes, John wrote a gospel to explore the phenomenon of Jesus. But it seems their primary interest is in telling the story. And as the original church even began to wrestle with the life after Jesus, it came down much more on how to love than how to believe. Much of the tension in these early expressions was in coming to terms with our own freedom to love, not creating a new religion. It's about freedom. What if in creating a complex system of belief, we are keeping people from their own maturity? The responsibility of orthodoxy wasn't just meant for really smart white men who have been approved. It was meant for the poor and the oppressed, the simple and the average, and even the female and the child. In defining orthodoxy in such simple terms, it was possible for anyone. Anyone. The question for us in leadership then is, are we willing to offer people the simplicity of orthodoxy? Are we willing to define it in the way Jesus did, in terms of love? And for those who are seeking the way of Jesus, do we really want to know we truly believe? Do we really want to know that we know? And the answer to our question is not found in a statement of belief, but in the everyday evidence of love in our lives. I'm Jonathan Brink, and this is something to think about.